are. So free will. Uh, free will. Uh, Heavy. Uh, it's <laughs> so but mathematically, where where do mathematicians usually come down now? I think look, mathematicians run the gamut in their philosophy, mm -hmm. their temperament, their attitude towards life. So I think I'm safe in saying that probably most mathematicians would say this is a matter about which math is silent. I mean, we I mean, we're not, you know, we don't think math has the answers to we like to think that maybe probably in most questions there's like a little bit of math mm -hmm. in them there's probably no questions in the real world which are completely unmathematical but there's also not that many questions in the real world which are completely mathematical and that math can just settle hmm. um yeah i don't let's see i i I like I like a lot of like deterministic ideas, but uh, free I, I don't know I, free free will's uh, free will's an interesting <laughs> one. It, I mean, you know, Poincaré. Another great quote from Poincaré. I won't be able to quote it exactly, but in the book, you know, there's there's certainly mathematicians think a lot about like you know, is there an ultimate answer that God knows to like all these mathematical questions? Mm -hmm. And that's what and and Poincaré kind of had like a funny answer to this. He's like, you know, even if god did know the answer to all mathematical questions and he just like appeared and told us we wouldn't really be able to follow it we probably wouldn't understand it so like what does it matter basically he's like he's like that's not even a question that we need to know because mm -hmm. whether or not god does know the answer to all mathematical questions like we wouldn't be able to comprehend yeah I, I i think it's i think it's interesting the things that we that we care about i think it's interesting that we even care about free will at all because it's it's something that you know people ask me about quite a bit and it's it, because it's people don't people like if if you were like hey do you want free will and uh, anyone would be like yep sign me up for the free will section but but you actually don't want to be thinking about everything all the day. you don't you don't want to be choosing your the what what amount of blood is throwing uh, flowing through your veins you you want this nifty bifurcation process that that has distributed things nice and easy for you so you aren't sitting there consciously choosing which direction the blood goes and everything else so it's, it's kind of interesting the domains that we do uh that we do seem to care a lot about it and other aspects we're like hey surprise me take me somewhere you know you relinquish control in a lot of ways and look i mean if, if you think about it in terms of our interactions with these machines machines that can play a game like chess or go or checkers i read a lot about checkers in this book uh or or machines that produce imitations of language or what have you it's very natural to like talk about what is the machine trying to do or what does the machine want right it's very natural right. for us to use that free will language even though the machine is undertaking a deterministic process and i'm not going to police that i feel like people sit, use those words and describe them because they feel right to us and i'm not so worried about whether the machine really <laughs> wants something or is trying to do anything yeah. i just know that you know those words that language makes it easier for humans to understand what's going on and like what the machine is doing so why shouldn't we use them